Hello, my friends. It's Poet WP here. Thanks for joining me. Today's video is also going to be quite different. Going through the archives, trying to find other writings to share besides just some poetry. And I was looking for an essay, some of my college essays. I saved them all. There was a lot of them. Uh, couldn't find the one I looked for, was looking for. However, I found one that uh, <laughs> I really uh, appealed to me. Um, and I caught the new Magnum show, Magnum P.I. show the other day. Well, part of it anyway. I was quite skeptical at first because I'm a fan of the old show. Being a kid of the 80s, I grew up with it. and um, But I kind of liked it. I liked the new show because they didn't try to in imitate Tom Selleck. They uh, really kind of made it their own. So I was kind of pleased with that. And it reminded me of, uh, um, you know, got me thinking about my old essays. And I wrote an essay once about Magnum P.I. <laughs> in college because I took like three classes in college where we just studied films and um and shows and whatnot, like like you do literature. And that was literally my favorite class. I loved those classes. I enjoyed the homework. Because, you know, I, someday I'm going to make a movie, you know. Hopefully. That's one of my other ambitions. But uh, before I had all these ambitions and before I found this mystical spiritual path, well, really it found me, but before I was Gabriel Samadhi and whatever on this path that I'm on. I uh, I was a nerd. I was geek chic. I was nerd supreme. And when you're a nerd, one of the things you do is you collect a bunch of crap. Like the Nine Inch Nails song, I pick things up. I am a collector. And things, well, things, they tend to accumulate. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, yeah, it's one of the things that relaxes me, or I or, uh, did when I was in my teenage years, and when I was a child, trading cards. Hey, you guys. Goonies never say die. So yeah, be a, being a total dork. This is this is this is the first time that you're in the presence where you're like at a dork's house, right? They got shit like this. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna read you this. There's some Ghostbusters too, and there's uh, I'm gonna read you this essay I wrote about Magnum PI, and then we got uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, this is really good. How much, Loucher? The goddess. Cully reigns. <laughs> Food, really? There's no escape. Cully ma shakti day. <laughs> Man, that traumatized the shit out of me. I saw this when I was like short rounds age. <laughs> Where he ripped that dude's heart out of his chest and that shit was rated PG. <laughs> he ripped his heart right out of his chest. What the hell was that about? That was nuts. Anyway. <laughs> You've had it, Molaram. <laughs> anyway, enough enough nostalgia geeking. And then I got Mash, A Team, Rambo, of course. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Dick Tracy. There it is, Magnum PI. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ugh. That's your overhead shot. I can hear the theme song in my head just looking at it. That sweet helicopter with the cool paint job. And he's on. <laughs> the dogs are always like on Magnum's heels. <laughs> Higgins tries to keep him in line. It was a great show. Great show. Anyway. Ugh. Straighten up when it was off here we are. I'm going to read you my little essay. I'm quick geeking out on nostalgia. I'm a nostalgia-holic, in case you haven't noticed. <clears throat> Magnum P.I. The classic show I picked was Magnum P.I. 
This was always one of my mom's favorite shows because she had a thing for Tom Selleck, and both of us love Hawaii. So I ended up seeing almost every episode of this series growing up. As far as broadcast history of the show goes, it premiered in December of 1980 on CBS and ran on the network until May 1988. It stayed... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this off camera because this is weird. It stayed in the li list of top 20 most popular shows for the entire scope of its... Let's look at that. Of its running. Of its uh, airtime. Okay. Where did I leave off? Yeah. The main character of the show, Thomas Sullivan Magnum, played by Tom Selleck, the most... Uh, was played by Tom Selleck. The most direct supporting role was the character of Jonathan Higgins, played by John Hillerman. Other supporting roles include the character Rick Wright, played by Larry uh, Minetti, and my favorite supporting role of the series, T.C. Calvin, played by Roger Mosley. This series appealed to me as a kid. Being, <clears throat> being compelling adventure stories of a private detective who pursues private justice for high-paying clients. Uh, shot around the backdrop of the tropical paradise of Hawaii, Magnum played sort of an American James Bond kind of character, who is a private eye and former Navy officer. Not only that, but to add to the glamour, he is shacked up in the opulent guest house of a well-educated, slightly snotty millionaire, retired British Army officer. He gives Magnum a hard time often, but is close friends with him and also his landlord. To make Magnum's character even more debonair, the English dude gives him an awesome 80s Arrest Me Red souped-up 308 GTS Ferrari to leave long black tire marks all over the Hawaiian countryside with. Another cool thing about the show is the awesome late 70s Shaft-like theme song well edited into the clips of Magnum loading guns, frolicking with hot women in bikinis, in bikinis, peeling out in the Ferrari, and wrestling a thug underwater who is trying to stab him with a knife. The intro alone gets you hyped with tough guy testosterone-fueled excitement. The character of Magnum is kind of contrasted. Tom Selleck portrays him as soft-spoken, well-seasoned. Let me read that again. Tom Selleck portrays him as a soft-spoken, well-seasoned operative who is kind who is kind of kindred towards a blue-collar, uh, conventional guy, but with real confidence and style and tons of Hawaiian shirts. And of course, like any classic hero. He has to beat the ladies off with a stick. This persona quickly made Tom Selleck a TV sex symbol of the 80s. Magnum was also politically correct and hip, especially for the time. A slightly sensitive man of the 80s who was a good guy through and through. One who could never be corrupted. The show touched on the negative effect of the Vietnam War on its veterans, a prominent issue of that time. All of the supporting characters were old war buddies of Magnum's, so they have that brothers-in-arms camaraderie going on. The supporting roles include the role of Higgins, who is kind of a mentor-friend-landlord character, very high society, and constantly giving Magnum advice. Another supporting role is the TC character, the helicopter pilot who looks like a bodybuilder and has a real loyalty to Magnum. He gives him rides in his chopper around the islands and assists him in his missions. The other main supporting character is Rick Wright, a slick club owner. He's Magnum's friend slash informant with knowledge of the criminal underworld, and he also helps Magnum on his missions. This show has it all. Beautiful Hawaiian scenery, awesome cars, hot chicks, lots of action, and a bit of mystery playing on the whodunit concept all detective shows have. It's no wonder it has such a cash... It was, it's no wonder it was such a cash cow of a series. In addition to 
the references listed below, I also watched a series of clips from the show. Anyway, there's no references. It just really doesn't matter, but... Yeah, that was just for fun, right? Pop culture geeking out time. Just for fun. I'm looking at some more of my crap from my childhood. Batman, man, this was like a landmark event. 1989, when Batman was released. Batman just became everywhere. Everything became Batman, and all was Batman for two and a half, three years. <laughs> It was intense. Call me Joker. As you can see, I'm a lot happier now. <laughs> and I got Roger Rabbit. All the kids love Roger Rabbit. I never, I mean, it was good, but I didn't like it like a lot of people did. And of course, Ninja Turtles. End with Ninja Turtles. I know so many of you love it so much. Because it's awesome, of course. <laughs> Leonardo is always my favorite. Donatello. My favorite turtles are, in order, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael. It was Trippy the Brain Crane with the arms. He had these little arms. He was the one that was like the head boss dude. Just... This amorphous brain with little arms. <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady. Anyway. Geeking out. Rambo. Can you believe they make Robocop and Rambo cards for kids? They used to sell us this shit at the gas station. It was like a total merging of like inappropriate culture. <laughs> Like, this is adult shit. And we're, like, buying a trading card. <laughs> it was the 80s, man. It was crazy. Life is different. Vigo. <laughs> Ghostbusters is so awesome. Bill Murray is a fucking national treasure. God bless you, Harold Ramis. May you rest in peace. You're a brilliant genius, and you're highly underrated. Okay. I'll quit rambling at you now, folks. Okay, thank you for joining me. I hope maybe you enjoyed some of this. I hope you can dig it. Okay, bye.